Faisal ibn Hussein al Hashim was born in Mecca in 1885, son of Sharif Hussein, the governor of Mecca. He held administrative positions in the Uthmani political system and became a vociferous spokesman and supporter of Arab nationalism. He was well known to T.E. Lawrence, the British colonel who became famous as Lawrence of Arabia. Lawrence favoured and befriended Faisal and used him as one of the leaders of the Arab revolt for the British. Lawrence decided that the Arabs needed a leader from their own race. He chose Faisal. During the early colonial disturbances, Faisal sought at a Paris conference in 1920 to become king of a pan-Arab state. His request was rebuffed by the French and British, who had already agreed on the division of the Middle East into small Arab nations. Instead, he was made king of Syria. After a brief one-year period as king, he was removed by the French mandate, and the British eventually decided to use Faisal to subdue Iraq. Faisal's nomination was championed by Gertrude Bell, a chief advisor to Churchill who was based in Iraq and was a friend of Faisal's. At a Cairo conference in 1921, the British decided to name Faisal King of Iraq. King Faisal's coronation was strictly a British affair and he received his crown to the British anthem, God Save the King. In truth, his position was largely ceremonial and symbolic and Iraq continued to be ruled under the British mandate. The British had already started using oil to power their naval cruisers and battleships and there was already a recognition that oil was to become an important resource. It had been noted that there were pools of sludge around Iraq that would burst spontaneously into flame and it did not take long for the British to exploit this resource. In 1925, an oil deal was signed that underlined the British subjugation of Iraq. The agreement granted Iraq only token royalties from any future oil revenue, but the lion's share went to the British-dominated Turkish Petroleum Company. Indeed, the British intended to keep Iraq's oil to bolster its own industrialised economy. The British plan was that King Faisal would appear to the people to strive for the independence of Iraq from the British mandate. So the train brings the 49-year-old ruler of 3 million Arabs on his state visit to London. Two the begun during King Faisal's first visit 13 years ago. In 1932, this charade was rewarded with recognition by the League of Nations of Iraqi sovereignty. But in reality, independence was only granted on condition that the Iraqi government be bound to support British foreign policy in the region, allow Britain to retain its air, naval and land military bases and permit continued British domination over its oil resources. On his death, ruling was passed to his son, King Ghazi ibn Faisal. 